This story is a hot mess and people should pay attention to this because it's not like this is going to be an isolated incident within an isolated, you know, career field. But let's talk about this one in particular. Circle of greed, circle of greed, how a $1 million teacher scheme left hundreds of uncertified teachers in Texas classrooms. This is a hot mess. So this picture that we see right here is the supposed mastermind of this alleged cheating scandal. All right, the article. Robert Williams was still seething days after a popular basketball coach and two assistant principals at Houston's first two historically black high schools were arrested in an alleged teacher certification scheme. It almost got me in tears, man, said Williams, a 1967 graduate of Jack Yates Senior High School in the city's predominantly black greater third ward neighborhood, told CNN Friday evening. We are fighting hard to overcome to show that we are more than qualified. I'm just being straight up with you. Prosecutors say that more than 200 people paid to have someone else take the state certification exam and are now scattered in classrooms across Texas. Local and state education officials are scrambling to track down the now certified teachers who cheated. The Houston Independent School District employees arrested were Vincent Grayson, who we saw at the beginning, a longtime teacher and head basketball coach at Booker T. Washington High School, described by prosecutors as the scheme's ringleader, along with Nicholas Newton, the school's assistant principal and the alleged test taker who helped educators fraudulently pass hundreds of tests. The most important thing to me is the ringleaders have been identified and are being rooted out of our home school district and the fact that they held positions of power there where they held in, where they were held in esteem by the children is the very worst part of this crime. Harris County District Attorney Kim Ogg told reporters on Monday. LaShonda Roberts, assistant principal at Yates, was also arrested for what Ogg said was her role as a recruiter and a referral agent who brought in individuals who sought the services of the impersonator test taker. Two other people not employed by the district have also been charged. The extent of the scheme will never be fully known, but we know that at least 400 tests were taken and at least 200 teachers falsely certified. Prosecutors said all five defendants faced two counts of engaging in organized criminal activity one felony count based on money laundering because the scheme allegedly yielded over $300,000 and engaging in um, organized criminal activity based on tampering, tampering with a government document stemming from the false statements made when the tests were administered. They have yet to enter pleas. Two other defendants not employed by the school district were identified as Darian Nicole Willett and Tywana Guilford Mason who prosecutors said were the proctors during the certification exams. CNN has sought comment from the attorney for um, Will, Will Height. Maybe I'm saying that wrong, Will Height. Guilford Mason is, an, is in another state and has not been arrested, according to a spokesperson for the Harris County District Attorney. HISD, with nearly 200,000 mostly Black and Hispanic students, is the largest in Texas and the eighth largest in the country. Booker and Yates, respectively, were established as the city's first two high schools for Black students prior to desegregation. How the cheating scandal worked. Grayson, described by Og as the scheme's kingpin and organizer, worked nearly 20 years at Booker T. Washington, which the HISD website said was, um, was originally known as Colored High when it opened in 1893. It was later renamed for the famous Black educator who helped found the Tuskegee Institute. Grayson's attorney, Cheryl Urban, acknowledged the seriousness of the charges, but says she awaits to see the evidence against her client. Grayson has been released on bond. We all know that a community struggles when the education system struggles, she told CNN affiliate KHOU. After, court, after a court appearance on Friday, CNN reached out to Urban for a comment. The state has the burden to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. Mr. Grayson is presumed innocent at this period of time, so we'll wait and receive what evidence they have against um, him to allow us to evaluate what we should do next.
Grayson was usually paid $2,500 by teaching certification candidates to have their exams taken by an impersonator at testing centers, where he paid proctors about 20% of that sum to facilitate the cheating, prosecutors said. Grayson allegedly made more than a million dollars from the scheme. It's almost certainly more than that because there's cash as well here, which is harder to trace. Mike Levine, felony chief prosecutor in the county's public corruption division. Certification candidates would arrive at the testing center, sign in, and leave a few minutes later. Nicholas Newton, the proxy texter, would sit in their seat, take, and pass the test. At times, Levine said, Newton allegedly took more than one test at a time. Jeez. In fact, when he was caught red-handed in February of 2024, he was logged into one test, Levine said. He said to investigators, well, look at the screen behind you, and he was logged into a, logged in as a different person taking another test on another terminal that same day. That is bold. You're logged in taking two tests. That's bold. Newton's attorney, Faraz Merchant, declined comment on Friday, saying he has yet to see any evidence against his client. Newton was being held on bond. Robert's lawyer, Brandon Leonard, called the charges baseless and said his client has dedicated over a decade of her life to serving students and supporting teachers, often under challenging and high pressure conditions. She has been released on bond. In this country, every person is presumed innocent unless proven guilty. And so far we've seen only allegations, no proof, no evidence. These accusations are simply unsubstantiated claims, and we will aggressively defend against these baseless charges. Ms. Roberts looks forward to her day in court, where we're confident the truth will come to light, he told CNN in a statement. A pattern of long drives helps unravel the scheme. The scheme began to unravel in 2023, when the Texas Education Agency became aware of certain irregularities at one Houston tex um, testing center, according to Levine, a former coach in the district who was applying for a job as a police officer in another part of the state had what all called an attack of conscience and notified the education agency. Oh, wow. So they had a break in the case. The most interesting irony to me in this circle of greed is that in spite of the perpetrators being the type of people that we trust our kids with, it was actually a good Samaritan with a conscience that brought the scheme to light. A curious pattern became immediately apparent. Investigators discovered that aspiring educators, including many who have failed the exams in other part of Texas, were traveling for hours to a Houston center where Levine said they passed with flying colors. Often these people had previously failed one or more attempts at the certification exam. Then they drove sometimes four or more hours to the Houston area and suddenly they were passing the test. The HS, I mean, sorry, the HISD employees charged in the scheme have been placed on administrative leave. All three of these employees have been arrested and will be receiving notifications, relieving them of their duties effective immediately, um, a spokesperson said. The, the spokesperson, Alexandra Elizondo, said in a statement. HISD was made aware of the investigation into the alleged che um, cheating conspiracy shortly before arrests were made. Mm -hmm. Any educator who engages in conduct of this nature abdicates their responsibility to our students and to our staff and represents a complete betrayal of the public trust, Elizondo said. A scramble to find the teachers who cheated. Now, local and state education officials are working to find these falsely certified teachers. If it is determined that any teachers currently working in HISD participated in this scheme or passed their certification exams fraudulently, we will take swift action to terminate their employment. Pearson VUE, a vendor that develops the teacher licensure exam for the state education agency, said it continues to coordinate with the TEA on their active investigation. Maintaining valid, reliable assessments and public trust is paramount to us, Pearson spokesperson Allison Bazin said in a statement. We're committed to integrity and professional certification and licensure tested, testing and actively monitor, investigate, and report suspicious activity or anomalies to our customers. It's going to be interesting to see how this um, impacts Texas. 
all of these teachers are scattered around. So this is going to touch a lot of people and not just those people, but those schools and the, the students, the parents and everyone around. So this is going to be interesting to watch. Y'all go ahead and weigh in. Don't forget to like, comment and share. A couple of interesting stories. This man still has his job, by the way, just know that. Ohio Sheriff's Lieutenant, if you support the Democratic Party, I will not help you. This man still has a job, by the way, just repeating that. All right, it says, a, a lieutenant for an Ohio Sheriff's Office is making headlines after some of his social media posts caught the public's eye. According to news station WHIO, John Rogers, a um, Clark County Sheriff's Office lieutenant for more than 20 years, made several Facebook posts that brought a lot of scrutiny to himself and the Clark County Sheriff's Office. Some posts, which have been shared more than 250,000 times, suggested that Rogers would factor in a caller's voting preference when responding to emergency calls. It says suggested, but that's what he said in his Facebook post. So it's not that it suggested, it is that he said it. Other posts stated, I am sorry, if you support the Democratic Party, I will not help you. And the problem is that I know which of you supports the Democratic Party, and I will not help you survive the end of days. According to WHIO, Rogers wrote in another post that people would need to provide proof of who you voted for before rendering aid. Chief Deputy Mike Young sent a statement to the news station that, in part, the office agrees the comments made were highly inappropriate and do not reflect the sheriff's office service delivery to all residents, regardless of their voting preference. He stated that the station and Lieutenant Rogers would work especially hard to regain the public's trust. Okay, sure. Y'all, this, <laughs> this excuse... It is also suggested that a possible medical issue is involved in Rogers' actions. WHIO obtained an investigative file and discovered an inter-office communication with supervisors that Rogers wrote. I do not remember writing these posts or deleting any posts. The file also indicates that Rogers is prescribed sleeping medication, which Rogers documented. It does cause some of my communication to be out of character which is a documented side effect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you believe this? Do you believe this excuse? It, it's sleeping medications, y'all. According to WHIO, the sheriff's office apologized for Roger's behavior and said he received a written reprimand for violating the department's social media policy and he would remain on duty. So this man still has a job. This man still has a job. This man still has a job and they're blaming it on sleep medicine. Okay. All right, y'all. <laughs> this was kind of interesting. This is just a short post. Conservative Texas megachurch pastor Bax Harris in last minute op-ed. A pro-life senior pastor of a Baptist megachurch in Texas came out in support of VP Kamala Harris in a new op-ed over the weekend. William De um, I don't know if that's supposed to be William. William Dwight McKissick Sr., the senior pastor for reported 3,000 congregants at Cornerstone, Cornerstone Baptist Church in Arlington, condemned former President Donald Trump's character and his conduct during the January 6th uh, failed insurrection. The party I knew and loved would have never chosen as its nominee, the adulterous, childish, habitually lying, and criminally convicted Donald Trump, McKissick wrote while praising the Democratic nominee as a person of good character. McKissick said his positions on marriage equality and some abortion have not changed. He still supports Texas constitution, constitutional ban on gay marriage, as well as protecting life in the womb. However, McKissick said that because neither policy, I'm sorry, neither party supports his positions on social issues, he will instead vote based on the character of the candidates. The statement wasn't a complete surprise. McKissick has already endorsed Harris on social media and spoke on an evangelicals for Harris Zoom call in August alongside other Christian leaders. It's also not the first time he has endorsed a Democrat for president. In 2016, he wrote a blog post in support of Hillary Clinton, again, citing his issues with Trump's character. Okay, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> there are so many people breaking 
for Harris that would typically, if the Republican Party had put up a normal a normal nominee, they would have gone with that Republican nominee. But Trumpism is a very different strain of toxicity, and it's making these people break for the Democratic nominee. And I will take it. But y'all already know, and I've said this before, I would have voted for a half dead goat. So it's not like <laughs> it's not like I am a reliable source. I would have voted for a half dead goat before voting for Trump. But now now we're seeing where other people are landing. Go ahead. Let me know what you think of these two stories. Don't forget to like, comment and share.